Hello guys, this is part 2 video of the two part video series on React Starter Kit with Laravel where we will finish building this CRUD with create and edit forms. But I will remind you that the project gets bigger and deeper with more functionality in the course version of this video. So the course on Laravel Daily has the second part which may be expanded based on your feedback even more and this week until March 18th there's 40% discount of yearly or lifetime membership with coupon Laravel 12. Now let's go to the video and finish that CRUD with React, TypeScript, Inertia and ChatCN. Now as we have ChatCN powered table with static data, let's replace that with dynamic data from the database. We do get from the controller, we do pass the tasks as parameter from Inertia Render. So we need to accept those parameters here. So we put in tasks here and we will use those tasks in the react instead of table row here like this we will have a loop or in case of react it's a map through list items and this is the code tasks map and each task will contain its object and we have tasks id and tasks name in the table now we refresh and we have this table with tasks coming from the database now you may have seen the underlying things by php storm the message or the warning is that parameter has an any type similar here tasks has any type and this is where we need to talk about TypeScript. So Laravel starter kits use TypeScript and also ChatCN library uses TypeScript. So if you go to table component, it's table.tsx, not JSX for React. And the idea is to create the types in JavaScript, similarly how we do in PHP by defining stricter types which became much more popular in Laravel 10. For example, even within the same starter kit, if we go to profile controller, we have response here. We have redirect response as a return type. It's optional, but provide more clarity and in some cases extra validation that developers wouldn't pass or wouldn't return something unexpected. So similar here, we will define the structure and the type for tasks. And Laravel Starter Kits has quite a few types already defined in the file resources.js types index.d.ts. Look at this, auth, breadcrumb item, navigation items for the main navigation. So look here, navigation item needs to have title URL and then optional with question mark icon and is active. And then in the app header TSX, when defining navigation items, we specifically specify that it's nav item list array with this specific structure. If someone, some other developer in the future specifies wrong data here, then the JavaScript or TypeScript would validate that and restrict the errors. So in here, in index.d.ts at the bottom, we define our own types. Again, I will repeat, this is optional. Our table works without TypeScript. It shows the data, but for additional validation and also for IDE autocompletion, we may define this. I will copy it from my notes, the interface or the type for one task. And then inside our component in the table, we import that type. This is the syntax. We import type task, import interface as a type. This is the syntax and then we define, we restrict that this task's parameter is actually an array, a list of type task. Now, as you can see, this is not underlined and task is not underlined anymore. No TypeScript warnings. If we refresh the page, it doesn't change anything. The behavior is still the same. But for example, if I delete task ID and I put dot here, C autocomplete in PHP storm, with the structure from that type. And also if I put some kind of different field, it is underlined with warning that property does not exist on type task. It's still just a warning. The page itself will work. So you have warning here and also underlined the file name. And if we change it back, then it's clean again. So if you want, you may use TypeScript in your components on top of React Starter Kit, but it's optional. One other thing, if you choose to not use TypeScript, you still need to create your components with TSX extension instead of JSX because underlying components of table from ChatCN, app layout and others 
are all TSX. So then if you create JSX from those, it will not work. Even if you don't specifically use TypeScript in your components, the file extension should be still TSX. The next step is delete button on the right side of the table. For that, we import the components of button and button variants from ChatCN. And then in our table, we add a table cell with that button. This is the syntax button, variant destructive, which will give us red color. And this is exactly where button variants are useful. And then on click of that button, we will call a method delete task with the parameter of task ID. And that method will be created inside of our React component before the return. I will paste it from my notes again. It will call the router delete with task destroy route, which we already have in the controller with ID as a parameter. And also we need to import router as PHP Storm suggests from Inertia React. Or in fact, we already have one import from Inertia React. So let's just add it here, head and router. The result is this, delete button, we click it. Are you sure? Cancel, then nothing happens. If we confirm, then the task is actually deleted and then the redirect happens to the table. In the controller, this is exactly what we have, redirect route. But we didn't receive any notification or alert or text that it was successful. For that, we will use a ShadCN component called Sonar, which is Toast component for React. This is how it works. If we click this, this is on the bottom right. You probably don't see that because of my face in the YouTube video, but let me show you in our project. If we follow the installation, so we run npx, add sonar and this is where we get to interesting thing in chat cn and currently latest react 19. not all chat cn components support react 19. you can read the documentation and this link on the chat cn homepage, but what you need to know for now is use force which will look for the latest version of that component and will install successfully this is just a warning this is not an error and then we import toaster from Sonar and add it wherever we want. In our case, we will add it in the app header layout, which we use. So I paste it into the import. And then in addition to app shell, header and content, we will add toaster with position top right. So this is where we show the toaster. Now, how do we call that toaster component? In our index TSX, we also need to import that toast from Sonar. So toaster is kind of a placeholder for where it will be and toast is actually where you call that when you want to show that something and we need to call that after route delete is called again i will paste it toast success and now if we try to delete the task okay and this is our toaster notification now let's build the create and edit forms which would be pretty similar so i will work on create form and edit form will be almost identical copy paste. So in our index TSX, we will add a button to create form. And this is where that button variance will be actually used. This is not used in the variant of delete, but it will be used above the table where we will add this. We add margin top for the table and add a link, inertia link, which we need to import obviously here, head router and link with class name of outline button variants and the url is tasks create and similarly in this button actually i forgot to add table cell here this is interesting how it actually worked but we add a link here to the url of tasks task id edit and then let's wrap it in cell which ends here auto format with php storm like this so now we should have links yep this is our table now create task button and edit and delete buttons now let's build the actual react component for the create task we have that prepared in the controller so create renders tasks create and then we have store to submit the form and here's the code of create tsx i've pasted it all and let's dissect step by step and i will explain it you already see familiar things imported like app layout head and button but in this case we have more components imported input and label comes from ui which means from chat cn input error comes from default starter kit which is in components and also we will use use form from inertia this is a form helper of inertia and also from react we'll use those two things which i will explain in a minute then we have export create, which is the same as the file name. And let's scroll down to the app layout first to see what's inside in the HTML. This is similar to what you have seen previously. 
and then we have the form. On submit, we have create task, which is defined here. We will get to that in a minute. And then in the inputs, we have label input with various attributes and classes. Now, to build all that form, we have this, which is from inertia. Use form comes from inertia. Then required create task form comes from TypeScript. This is again optional and we define the type inside of the same TSX file, not externally. This syntax comes from inertia. If you go to inertia page about forms, scroll down, form helper, choose react, and you see a similar syntax. Then create task is a form event handler. Again, we choose to use types here. We prevent the default behavior and then we do post. This is again inertia helper, posting all the data to that route which we have already prepared a few more parameters and then on success we have reset of the form and on errors we not only reset the name but also change the focus refocus on that specific component which is powered by this line so this is where we use use ref so we would be able in react to use this component like this this input and this is where we have ref kind of assigning the reference the name in react syntax so yeah with all that explained let's try to use it we we'll click create task this is our form we type in something create task and as you can see it works also if we don't specify that create task this is working and this is powered by that input error component from starter kits now let's build the edit form which will be almost identical in fact i've built it already and let me show you edit tsx in the same folder of resources js pages tasks and it's almost identical similar imports or even identical then we define edit task form the difference is this we pass the task from the edit method of task controller here this inertia render and again we use typescript this is where we reuse the same task type interface we had before and then different route for tasks update and instead of post we have put here again inertia form helper and everything else is almost identical just different names for edit something like edit task is the name of the function of the form event handler but everything else is almost repeating if we try to edit that dot 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 update the task and it is updated it works so we have built our crud the final thing in this video is to add breadcrumbs which is actually very easy in the laravel starter kits in the typescript file of index.dts have you seen this breadcrumb item and also in the profile tsx of the starter kit you probably have seen this breadcrumb item which is also used in app layout as a parameter so we just need to repeat the same logic we copy it from here from the profile import into our index tsx for tasks we don't need shared data we just need breadcrumb item then we copy paste the breadcrumbs from here to our index tsx and let's change that to this structure so the first item will be dashboard and then tasks and then we use in the app layout the parameter of breadcrumbs also actually i'm thinking that we can import breadcrumb item in the same import from types breadcrumb item like this instead of separate line this is a personal preference actually and now if we refresh our page we have dashboard which we can click or navigate to tasks so yeah this is how easy it is to add breadcrumbs on any of your page powered by laravel starter kit so yeah that's it for this youtube version of the crash course of react starter kit which i think still gives you the fundamental and practical example but if you want to go deeper with more functionality and if you want to get the link to the github repository and code snippets that you can copy paste into your code and more explanations of the theory with the links to the docs of react chat cn and others i invite you to the premium course on laravel daily which is this week until march 18th discounted with coupon code laravel 12 you get 40 percent off yearly or lifetime membership and yeah, what do you generally think about this React starter kit? Will you use it in the future? Or if you haven't used React previously, will it be the path for you to adopt it? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.